Okay, I'm here with Butch, and we're out of Pancho Villa State Park, New Mexico, and he's going to show me around his trailer, and it's uh, pretty hefty. Looks like it's pretty good off-road camper, so let's check it. What was the question? Just tell us about your camper. How long you been in it, where you started, uh, you full-timer, um, just whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Um... Well, first, um, I, my name is Butch. I have a channel, Butch Kellen, K-E-L-I-N, Adventurer. And um, you can see a little bit about my my camper and my my ex, my adventures there. But my story starts in about 2017 when I knew retirement was coming up and started watching YouTube videos including of course Bob Wells and many many others everybody watches him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I started very gradually I uh, bought the uh, trailer it's a cargo trailer 7 by 14 foot with a 7 foot ceiling I uh, had it uh, manufactured in Corsicana uh, course I had to go through a dealership in Fort Worth to get it but we sat down with my laundry list of what I thought was going to work best for me and above all I wanted to have as much flexibility as possible and wanted to keep my options open so that I could experiment yeah and go in whatever direction I wanted and there were there were a lot of things that I did not want which is why I went with something custom rather than trying to find something on a lot that would suit my needs because there were lots of things, lots of uh, trailers and truck campers and fifth wheels and even class A's that would have suited all my needs but just gone overboard to the point where uh, way too expensive for what I really wanted to accomplish. So, for example, I did not want any slide outs. Okay. I did not want to find myself at a, a, a campground and have a mechanic come out and look at it for 150 hour. Yeah, yeah, and come come time to leave and I go to slide it in and it's off the rails or whatever. Right. Things like that. And, um, uh, I figured an outside shower was was plenty good so I didn't need anything inside and uh, I went with a composting toilet rather than a black tank and um, eventually I did put in a freshwater tank and a sink and a gray tank with a battery powered pump on that right but that was I, I went without that for quite a while and the only running water I had in the rig was what I was pouring out of a jug. Okay. So I, I got the, the trailer and I, I put a, a bed in it and um, went camping and then I decided I needed uh, a solar power so I put five 100 uh, amp uh, watt uh, panels on the roof and I, I, I put the ladder rack up there myself. And okay. Put in the three 100 amp hour AGMs. This is the charge controller right here. Okay. The cables coming in from the roof. Um, and that was adequate to uh, keep my cell phone charged and keep my laptop charged and have lights when it got dark. And, uh, eventually I got uh, the refrigerator and a freezer and it was working fine with those things but certainly not enough for uh, heating or air conditioning okay you have a wood stove in here too I noticed that that's true um, that was the second thing I put in after the solar was um, a heat source right because personally I would rather camp where it's cool even cold to avoid the uh, mosquitoes and any other nasty bugs but of course I don't like being cold and don't want to spend big 
bucks on um, uh, RV parts or anything like that. So the wood burning stove was a was a good option. What are you burning in the wood stove? I have to cut my wood really small. Okay. So this is a typical size. Okay. And I'll cut it up even smaller than this just to get started. Um, keep it going overnight, but it still needs to be filled every four hours or so. But it keeps you warm though? Um, when I had the shell built, right. um, I had to put insulation in the walls. There's, there's an okay. inch of insulation. I like the way you got those shelves up back there. I was trying to, what do you have them mounted into? Studs in the walls or? Uh, no, the um, angle brackets are just like anybody else's closet. They they uh, slide into these rails that go from okay. near the ceiling down to the E-track. Right. Um, the E-track I thought was a good idea at the time I, I was going through my laundry list of what I wanted them to put in a custom built trailer. And I am using the E-track to hold the the refrigerator in and the freezer, the water, uh, tanks, the sink, all of that is uh, I'm using uh, tie down straps to uh, fasten it to the wall. So um, you got a refrigerator and a freezer? Yeah, the gray one is the refrigerator. Okay. And the freezer is the black one. The ice cold, whatever how you pronounce it. Yeah. You got a microwave too, huh? Yeah. And a sink. Yep. And bed. You got everything you need though, don't you? Um, and a laptop. <laughs> oh, there you go. And All the modern accessories. And a I like that little setup right there, that little table right there. That's one thing that is screwed to the wall, but along the lines of keeping my options open and being flexible, everything that's attached to the wall here um, I can disconnect in a matter of minutes because it's just ratchet strapped to the e-track. Do you have to put everything away on the shelves when you move or you just basically leave it up there? Uh, no. If you've moved in a tra trailer, you know that anything that can fall on the floor I'm will just, fall I was just asking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I learned that the hard way. I mean, way. some people do and then they open up the door and they got I, I don't have any ceramic man. coffee cups anymore. Everything, every coffee cup Hell, I, I don't have, really have a, I got plastic steel. coffee cup, yeah. <laughs> So it serves your needs, huh? Yep. And it's pretty rugged. I mean, I saw those tires and I was like, man, that thing's pretty rugged. I don't think, what do you pull this with? Uh, my tow vehicle is uh, uh, a Ram 3500. So I've got three times the towing power I need to, to pull this. What do you think this trailer weighs, rough, rough idea? I, I really have no idea, I just know. Uh, the dual axles if you want to get a shot of those mud tires you, you can see that the uh, 32 inch mud tires on axles that can support 3500 pounds each uh, wow there's I, i'm i'm sure i'm only uh halfway to whatever the limit would be on uh, what this what this trailer can hold okay well, let me let me get a shot of the outside and I appreciate you talking to me. Hope I don't fall down going down the steps. Yeah, be careful there. <clears throat> it's getting windy, that's why I'm worried about it. But he said he pretty cool looking. See a stack right there, and you see the top tops of the panels right there. Did you make your grill? He's got the AC right there. Pretty nice, isn't it? He's got a ramp. I mean, look at the size of those tires right there. Pretty hefty. Overall, pretty big rig he's got right there. I will say that much, but I'll give you all a shot of the back door. He's got a screened in back door. And I recognized that it was built. Pretty in sweet, huh? Yeah, I mean, the construction is. I like the way he's got those shelves in there, and he's got his windows. He's got his little seat and everything. I, mean, they build all I guess that's a supply cabinet right there. 
I guess those are the water tanks right there. And he's got a microwave, two refrigerators. But that's a good shot of the wood stove right there. But that's the view of his camper. <laughs> Pretty sweet. But uh, he's been full time now for about five months, I think he told me. But nice, isn't it? Utility trailer built into a camper. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed looking at Butcher's trailer. And uh, the wind's picking up here now. So that's going to be the end of this video. And if you'd like to keep up with me and Little Man, you can keep up with us on Instagram at My Scamp Travel Trail. is all small letters. And if you'd like to uh, support our channel, I'm going to put the links down below in the description. Keep on watching. Give me a thumbs up. And see you in the next video. Enjoy. Have a good day. Just some extra footage of his camper. You can see the solar panels up on top. And he's got an electric bike like I used to have. He's sitting there having a conversation with Jamie. But that's his tow vehicle right there. Pretty sweet, isn't it? But overall, got his AC poked out his window. But they're talking about the door staying, staying shut. But yep. Pretty sweet, but look how high that trail is off the ground. Pretty steep. Pretty nice. Okay, Butch is going to tell us the story how he ended up getting a big old truck like he's got. Okay, so currently I have a 3500 Ram uh, Dually uh, diesel with 400 horsepower and over a thousand foot pounds of torque. Originally, um, when I started getting into this lifestyle, I, I bought a Ram 1500 uh, and I thought it was adequate. It had 400 horsepower, but it was a gas engine. So probably barely 400 foot pounds of torque. And I got this little 14 foot trailer. Uh, it's, I, 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 that was adequate, it seemed to me. And then I started putting things into it like a wood burning stove and batteries and water tanks and all the furniture and so on and it got a little heavier and then I <laughs> then I sold my house and I, I decided that if it didn't fit in the trailer or in the truck or on the truck it wasn't going to come along because I wasn't going to pay a thousand dollars a year to store things that I could throw away and replace for less than that. So right. I ended up storing a lot of things in the back of my truck where I had a cap and on the ladder rack where I'd put a plywood deck and uh, in the back seat, I actually removed the seats in the back and filled that to the ceiling with stuff. And um, was going to the to an event up in uh, Rock Springs, Wyoming. So I was going from Texas through New Mexico, where I ran into a few mountains, and then in, in through Colorado, where I was going over some passes that were um, pretty challenging for a 1500, and it would it would slow down going up, but it was going down that was even more scary because um, I pulled into one camping area in uh, Flaming Gorge uh, some BLM land right on the lake and the brake went all the way to the floor and I had to pump the brake but fortunately I was in some soft sand and it did come to a stop and the next day I was able to um, uh, use the brake sparingly and make it to my next destination. And I got up to the event in, in Rock Springs and the this was an escapees event and they had um, a service they called Smartway. And they told me the weight of every uh, wheel on my truck and then every wheel on my truck and trailer when it was uh, connected and after they weighed it they they took me aside for my little consultation and told me that I was not only 
overweight and wearing out my truck much faster uh, than I should, but I was also in danger of having an accident. And if I did have an accident, uh, I could be found at fault because I was- Unsafe uh, conditions. Yeah, pulling so much uh, and the truck was loaded so heavily that I was beyond <laughs> the limits. And the scariest thing was that the insurance company might find me liable because uh, I was uh, breaking the law, more right. or less. So I went to a couple of dealerships and I found the 3500 and uh, bought myself a, a new 2020 Ram 3500. And now I'm braking quite comfortably with the, uh, the exhaust brake. Uh, and now I can go down a 6% grade and if I had the cruise control set at 50, I'm going 50 without even touching the brake. Do you have brakes on the trailer? The brake, the, the trailer does have electric brakes. Okay. Yes. And I was told that I should up that from a setting of one to a setting of five out of 10 to let the trailer do more of the braking than the truck even has Yeah, because you'll wear your front brakes out, especially going downhill. Uh, yeah, well, with, with the exhaust brake on the truck, I didn't even have to touch the brake, so the, 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 uh, the, that engine is, is doing all the braking I really need. Well, it sounds like an interesting story, but appreciate you sharing it with us. Well, it's fun to tell, so it might teach some people to pay a little more attention to what their weights are. You'd be surprised how many people out here don't have a clue. They're just, they want to get back on the road, get away from COVID, and they bought them a trail and bought them a truck, and I've seen some of them can't even park the thing as much, let's drive them, but. Well, that's why this service from uh, Escapees is so valuable. Um, they, like I said, they weigh each and every tire Okay. Tell you not only what your tongue weight is, but uh, what the weight is, and they'll 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 check your door jam and find out you know what what your gross vehicle weight is and what it's capable of. Okay. Well, once again, thanks for sharing. You're welcome, John. Thank you. Now that right there is a hell of a rig. I mean, look at the truck and look at the tires on that trail, and that's a hefty mobile right there.